so very good evening to all of you and welcome in this uh, eighth uh, online pg teaching class which is going to be organized under the banner of upri chapter so for this session i would like to introduce dr sweety gupta she is associate professor in rishikesh uh, dr sweety over to you thank you ma'am so good morning all so today uh, we uh, we have with us dr sambit swarup nanda assistant professor homi jagir baba cancer hospital uh, varanasi and he will be delivering his talk on demarcating neck node in target volume for head and neck cancer radiotherapy friends to put all their questions or queries in the chat box and that will be taken at the end of the session welcome dr sambit and over to you thank you ma'am for the nice presentation and uh, nice introduction and i will be talking about the topic that is the demarcating neck nodes in target volume for head and neck cancer radiotherapy so why this topic is important because a significant chunk of the head and neck squamous cell carcinoma patients tend to present with uh, neck nodes that is either in the cervical region or in the scf region and almost 50% of the pharyngeal and laryngeal tumors tend to have clinically palpable lymph nodes at the beginning and almost 30% of them have occult lymph nodes at the, at the time of presentation so why do we need to take care of the neck nodes the primary intention is it is important both for the surgeons as well as for the radiation oncologist as far as the surgeons are concerned they have to take a, take a call on whether to uh, go ahead with selective neck dissection or modified neck, uh, radical neck dissection based on involvement of the primary site its t stage and the chances of involvement of the lymph nodes when it comes to radiation oncologist it is the selective neck irradiation that is important earlier in the 2d era we used to irradiate all the lymph neck nodes in level taking into account the limiting doses to the spinal cord in the modern era in with the use of imrt and bmrt technique we have the option of treating selective part of the nodes while leaving behind the rest of the without without compromising the uh, doses being received by the spinal cord or the brain stem or even the temporal lobe so uh, um, it is important to make sure that all the lymph nodes get the adequate dose which are required to be done at the same time we have the chances of avoiding the ors like the parotid the dars muscle the minor cerebellar glands the oral mucosa mandible uh, which may decrease the risk of posterior radio necrosis temporal lobes optic apparatus uh, middle ear and temporomandibular joint again the brief knowledge about the nodes to be taken in the ctb it will help us to escalate the doses in the primary site as well as in the involved lymph nodal site thus help helping us to deliver differential doses in differential regions so uh, to begin with let's go ahead with the radiological anatomy of the malignant lymph nodes so the most commonly used and uh, has been used since a long time is the ultrasound ultrasound the high resolution ultrasound has a tendency to detect the malignant lymph nodes very accurately the typical features include increase in size of the node the nodal parenchyma being exhibiting inhomogeneous low or mixed ecogenicity irregular margins with round shapes loss of normal hyalur ecogenicity and on doppler sonography we get to find uh, it has a peripheral or a mixed vascular pattern when we come to ct or mri the earliest evidence in favor of uh, the criteria for det determining a malignant lymph node came from the sommeter who with uh, both uh, they proposed a soms criteria that is all the lymph nodes in the cervical region which are more than 1 cm in size except in jugular digastric group of lymph nodes where short axis diameter is considered to be 1.5 as the cut off beyond which uh, the lymph nodes were taken to be malignant in uh, nature the typical shape of a malignant node is spherical rather than ellipsoid with heterogeneous early enhancing pattern Uh, with a necrotic hypodens uh, in the center or at times eccentrically placed, placed cortical hypertrophy usually the malignant lymph nodes have three or more uh, are present in a three or more clusters with borderline nodes and the margins are usually ill defined which 
typically characterizes the malignant implant of the nose. So what is the ideal thing that either we had to go ahead with CT scan or MRI? We have analyzed the uh, uh, meta, a meta-analysis which has been conducted recently where they have analyzed 63 studies of 3,000 patients roughly. What they showed was the pooled sensitivity of the CT was higher, that is 77% as compared to MRI, that is 72%. On the other hand, the specificity was higher for the MRI, that is 81% versus 72% for the CT scan. Based on these two, they have, uh, cut, uh, they, they have come to a conclusion that the cutoff for MRI is 10 mm and for the CT is 12 mm for diagnosing a metastatic lymph nodes. In 2001, uh, just around the time when uh, the uh, Clifford Chow paper came and the uh, Grigoyer paper came, the so astro meeting, uh, there was a consensus which was reached that any cervical lymph node more than one centimeter in size is to be taken as malignant with 1.5 centimeter being the cutoff for jugular diagnostic and 8 mm for the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes. Ideal shape is usually a spherical, necrotic center irrespective of the size and cluster of three or more borderline nodes are to be taken into consideration. What about if we have multiple lymph nodes which are sub-centimetric in size? This is one of the recent paper which came in 2016 in prestigious Red Journal, where they have shown that the when a summed long and short axis diameter uh, of all the lymph nodes were taken into consideration, and a cutoff of more than 17 mm was taken uh, taken as the cutoff. The hazard ratio of recurrence was correlated significantly with this sum diameter of more than 17 mm. So, a multiple subcentimetric lymph nodes with some long and short axis diameter more than 17 mm can be taken as consideration for malignant lymph node. Now, uh, this is about the diagnosing of the lymph nodes, malignant lymph nodes. What does this uh, corresponds to? This is one of the uh, important paper by the Chao et al. Well, they have shown that when the uh, size of the node, that is short axis diameter of the node, is less than one centimeter versus more than three centimeter, the chances of extracapsular extension increases from around 20 to 30 percent to roughly around 70 to 95 percent. So uh, this has a uh, say in the overall outcome as well as uh, toxicity is related to the treatment. What about the latest imaging, that is the functional imaging based on the FDG PET CT scan? It has complementary role to the CT scan. However, the in one of the meta-analysis where uh, it has been evaluated whether in case of a neck node negative disease or occult primary disease, it does, does it help to uh, change the management of the uh, management of the patient? Like, for example, in case of a T1, T2, N0 buccal mucosa patient, if on PET scan, if we get a neck node, do we go ahead with the SND or MRND? But it showed that the relative pooled sensitivity was relatively less, that is only 58%, although the specificity was higher, that is almost 87%. So even now, for the uh, diagnosis, uh, before the diagnosis, before going into the management, the role of PET CT is doubtful, specifically in early stage disease. However, it may be useful in case of T3, T4, and N plus disease. So, what are the determinants that ultimately decide the nodal involvement? The first one is the site of the disease. Like for a well lateralized buccal mucosa tumor, the uh, nodal involvement is most likely to be ipsilateral. While in case of a, a midline structure like a soft palate or a tonsil, uh, the chances of contralateral lymph node involvement is significantly high. So that has to be taken into consideration while contouring the CT. Next is the T stage. T stage is the single most important determinant for the nodal involvement. As the T stage goes on increasing, the uh, tendency of nodal involvement increases significantly. The extent of the disease, if the uh, disease is uh, I, um, it's limited to one side that like in case of buccal mucosa or even in case of C8 tongue where the uh, where the disease is limited to the lateral border of the tongue, then the uh, chances of contralateral involvement is significantly low. However, uh, we have to take into account the sites where the 
propensity of contralateral metastasis as well as steep metastasis high like in case of tongue and in case of base of tongue again the surgical approach is uh, very important and uh, if the surgeon uh, has undergone uh, if the patient if, like for example there is a buccal mucosa patient the patient has undergone a surgery but however during the surgery to get a clear margin the surgeon has uh, explored the uh, has done infrastructure maxillectomy and explored the sub palate part or the hard palate part which is a midline structure then the contralateral lymph node has to be taken into consideration so uh, now which lymph nodes to be taken into uh, count while contouring the ctv from the um, uh, older data we have got the uh, evidence and most of them have come from the uh, surgical series even in case of floor of mouth rmt regions and the oropharyngeal regions which shows that in those lymph nodes which has involvement chances of involvement is more than 5 to 10% the lymph node group or lymph node station needs to be taken into account while contouring the ct this is the consensus guideline that came in 2003 of, by grigoy and this was updated in 2014 a recent update has come in 2019. Uh, here, uh, I am not going to go into the details of the, uh, the contouring guideline of the individual lymph node stations. What are the important uh, summary of this? The important lymph nodes are that is the 1A, that is submental group. The 1B is the submandibular group. Level 2, 3, 4 are the upper, middle and the lower jugular uh, group of lymph nodes. Level four, uh, level five is the uh, posterior triangle group of lymph nodes. Level six is the enter compartment, that is the enter jugular, as well as pre laryngeal, pre tracheal group of lymph nodes. Level eight is the uh, retropharyngeal, as well as retrostyloid group of lymph nodes. Paro, uh, level um, uh, level nine is buccofacial, level ten is posterior skull, and the uh, group of lymph nodes. So coming ahead with the contouring of the uh, CTB. So when there is a N plus disease, there is a gross node uh, which is seen either um, uh, clinically or radiologically or both. Then we have to take into account the radiologically um, uh, node to be as the nodal GTV. We have to take one centimeter margin around the node. This has to be cropped from the bone because the microscopic spread doesn't happen to the bone. However, when the nodal size increases, as we have seen previously, the chances of extra capsular extension increases. Even with a one centimeter node, the chances of extra capsular extension is roughly around 30%. So we have to take into account that, uh, that thing and the entire space has to be kind of contoured. The, uh, if the patient has received new adjuvant chemotherapy, so uh, even at the, at the time of RTP scan, if we see there is no neck node, or the node has dissolved. Uh, then also we have to take into account the pre-NACT imaging and we have to make sure that we cover the nodal volume. So as far as the muscle is concerned, the sternocleidomastoid group of muscles has to be controlled and one centimeter superior and inferior to the grossly involved lymph node is to be taken into account while controlling the nodal CTV. Now, what about the subsite wise nodal distribution and what CTVs are to be taken while contouring the nodal CTV volume? The first one is the oral cavity. Oral cavity, broadly, there are two groups of uh, uh, disease. One is considered to be lip, which has a typically different behavior than the rest of the oral cavity, which includes the oral uh, cavity, buccal mucosa, the tongue, uh, that is the entire to third of the tongue as well as the al alveolus and RMT region. What has been seen is as far as the oral cavity of the, uh, as far as commercial carcinoma of the oral cavity is concerned, the cervical metastasis is seen in roughly around 30 to 35% of the patient at the time of diagnosis. 25% of the oral cavity patients have occult metastasis in the beginning and 3% tends to have contralateral metastasis. Of course, it is dependent on the number of uh, uh, the site of the disease as well as the T stage because uh, it's not uniform. If the buccal mucosa lesion, even if it is uh, well lateralized, if the lesion is around T four A or T four B, that is either involving the bone, skin, or the pterygoid plates, medial pterygoid group of muscles, or lateral pterygoid group of muscles or going into the ITF region, the chances of contralateral lymph node involvement ranges from 3 to 
and uh, the most common group of lymph nodes as far as oral tongue is concerned it is the level 2 for floor of mouth it is the 1b group of lymph nodes for rmt region it is the upper jugular that is again the level 2 group of lymph nodes so uh, what lymph nodes group to be taken while controlling the ctb for n0 or n1 digits uh, of the entire tongue and floor of the mouth uh, if uh, the level 1a to be taken only when the uh, tongue lesion is reaching up to the tip or if the floor of the mouth is involved uh, rest of the cases 1b has to be taken level 2 level 3 and level 4 has to be taken what about the level 5 level 5 is only to be taken when there is a n1 disease and the adjoining uh, level 5 has to be taken what about the contralateral lymph nodes contralateral lymph node involvement uh, it's uh, significantly high as far as the anterior tongue is involved and floor of mouth is involved. So, ipsilateral RT is only indicated if the uh, lesion is very well lateralized, less than 2 cm in size, well to moderately differentiated, DOI less than 1 cm. But if it is more than that, that is T2 lesion, that is more 2 to 4 cm or more than that, or DOI is more than 1 cm, the chances of contractual in nodal involvement is more than 10%. So, they have to be taken into account. What about the well lateralized structure like buccal mucosa and retromolar trigone? Usually, these patients are present to us after post-operative period. If the patient has N plus disease, then definitely we have to take into account the level 1A, 1B, level 2, 3, as well as level 4 disease. Level 5 disease needs to be taken into account uh, at the level in which the neck node is positive. The contralateral lymph node need not be taken unless and until there is a T4 lesion or the T4, usually T4B lesion or if it has multiple ipsilateral lymph nodes which has extracapsular extensor. As far as the pretracheal or prelaryngeal group of lymph nodes or the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes, the chances of involvement is significantly low. So, these need not be taken into account. Coming to the second part, that is the oropharynx. The oropharynx bro broadly have the tonsils, the tonsillar fossa, the soft palate, as well as the uh, posterior pharyngeal wall along the, uh, along the soft palate, the base of the tongue. However, the posterior pharyngeal wall below the soft palate level comes into the hypopharyngeal region. So, the primary lymph node drainage for these, these are usually the level 2 group of lymph nodes. As we can see in this paper uh, by Lederberg et al., which was way back in 1972 when the surgical, uh, this is a surgical series and based on the neck dissection, even in T1 base of tongue tumor or T1 tonsillar fossa tumor, the chances of N1 and N2 node as, node it's significantly high and ranges out, up to 40, you know, 30 to 40 percent. So, it is difficult for any of the lymph node station to be left behind in these cases. So, to broadly speaking, um, based on the Chow paper, we can see that it is the level 2 group of lymph node which is most commonly involved, followed by level 1b and level 3 in case of base of tongue and tonsil, tonsil uh, primaries. Uh, when uh, this is again a, a surgical series where we can see the level 2 and level 3 group of lymph nodes being, being involved significantly in case of base of tongue as well as in tonsillar fossa tumors. Um, the, in therapeutic and radical neck dissection, uh, the level 2 has been most commonly involved. So, uh, whenever we get a primary of the base of the tongue or the valecula or the tonsillar fossa, or even the disease of the buccal mucosa, which is going and involving the tonsillar fossa or enter tonsillar pillar or in the soft palate, these, uh, in these cases, level 2 group of lymph nodes has to be taken into consideration. What about the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes in case of uh, oropharyngeal tumors? The, typically, we have to take, in, take these into account because some of the surgical series have shown that when there is a subpalate in a tumor or tonsillar fossa tumor, the chances of uh, retropharyngeal group of lymph node involvement, it increases uh, roughly around 10 to 15, 20 percent. And uh, uh, if uh, patient has already N, N plus neck, it is around 12, 12 percent and 19 percent. And in case of N0 neck, it is around 5 percent and 4 percent. 
So in case of N0 neck, our, our retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes can be left behind, but not in case of any N plus disease. So uh, typical features in a oropharyngeal carcinoma where retropharyngeal group of needs need, uh, must be taken is when the disease is extending into the nasopharynx or to the pterygoid region, either the medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, muscles are involved or plate is involved, then we have to take into this. With gross retropharyngeal nodal involvement, that is a, a surety. At high level two lymph node, uh, lymphadenopathy, we have to take into account the retrostyloid group of lymph nodes as well as the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes. So coming to the summary, how to go ahead with the delineation of the neck in case of a oropharyngeal primary. The, uh, if the if patient is presenting with N0 disease, uh, one B need not be taken, but if patient has N plus disease, one B has to be taken. Uh, if the N, on N plus disease, level two, uh, the lymph node present is at the level two, then uh, we have to contour up to the base of the skull, that is to include the retrostyloid group of lymph nodes. Level three and level four has to be contoured bilaterally. About as far as the level five is concerned, if the patient has clinical N0 or radiological N0, then level five need not be taken. However, if there is a gross node in level two or level three, then the adjoining level five has to be contoured. Uh, the re uh, the retro uh, the level six group of lymph nodes that is the enter enter compartment lymph nodes need not be taken in this case and as far as the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes we have discussed that uh, if the disease is extending up to the nasopharynx or level two is involved and the node is high up in the level two then retropharyngeal group of uh, lymph node to be taken into consideration. Coming to the third part, that is the larynx. Uh, the larynx has the supraglottic, uh, glottic, as well as the subglottic part. The supraglottic part has the epiglottis, the areopiglottic fold, and the uh, false guard. What we can see is that in case of supraglottic larynx, the most common, the first echelon lymph node involvement is level two and level three, and uh, involved chances of them in being involved is significantly higher as compared to the glottic larynx, which had typically doesn't have a lymphatic drainage. However, if the glottic larynx extend into the supraglottic path or the subglottic path, the chances of nodal involvement increases significantly. Thus, while going ahead with the contouring of these uh, things, as far as the glottic uh, uh, cancers are concerned, in T1, T2, N0, we have to only contour the GTB, that is the small volume we take into consideration. We did no, do not take into consideration the uh, lymph nodal volumes. When the disease is higher, uh, is upstage, that is T3, T4, even with N0 disease, we have to take into consideration bilateral level 2, 3, 4 uh, diseases and if, uh, level 5 diseases adjoining the level 3 and 4. Any T with lymph node positive disease, we have to take into consideration the primary GTP as well as the nodal, primary nodal volume. Ipsilateral adjacent lymph node to be taken into consideration for high-risk GTP. Contralater rest of the contralateral lymph nodes volume and ipsilateral rest volume are to be taken for the low-risk GTP, which can be delivered 50 to, 6, 50 to 54 gray in uh, 30 to 33 fractions. Uh, as far as supraglottic part is involved, uh, for NET N0, uh, the lymph nodes are usually optional, but ipsilateral and uh, contralateral level 2 to 4 can be taken into consideration for low risk CTV for delivering around 50 to 54 gray. For NET with N plus digits, the ipsilateral adjacent lymph node are to be taken into consideration and rest of the contralateral lymph node can be taken for the low risk CTV. As far as the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes, only if, if the supraglottic disease is present, there is an N plus disease and the N plus is at the level of level two, then we have to take into account the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes. Otherwise, it may not be taken. So this is a gross summary of the same for N0 disease, level two, three, four, uh, that is to, uh, bilaterally. Level six group of lymph node is to be taken when there is a subglottic, so supraglottic disease with subglottic extension, or uh, there is T4 lesion in the in the larynx where there is cartilage erosion, cross cartilage erosion, or there is subglottic extension of either the node or the primary disease. That is, if the node is present in the level four 
uh, and in case of n plus digits if the node is present in the level 4 group of uh, at the level 4 then level 6 group has to be taken into consideration for T3 glottic larynx with impaired cord mobility, in case of N0, level 2, 3, 4, ipsilateral is sufficient. For uh, clinical N0, again the same, uh, level 2, 3, 4, bilaterally can be taken. For subglottic extension, the level 6 remains the significant uh, involvement, the fast echelon in most of the cases. So level 2, 3, 4 along with level 6 group of lymph node is to be taken into account for contouring the CTV. And uh, now the last one, that is the hypopharynx one. In hypopharynx, will, uh, the uh, Clifford Chow paper has shown that even with early stage hypopharynx, most, uh, mostly the posterior pharyngeal wall tumor, as well as in case of piriform sinus tumors, the chances of level 5 involvement is significantly high. And even in T1 and T2 uh, and N0 digits, the N0 that is clinically or radiologically, the chances of uh, level 5 lymph node involvement is less than 5%. However, if there is N plus digits, the chances of level 5 involvement is roughly around 15 to 20%. So any N plus digits along with, uh, in case of hypopharynx, the level 5 group of lymph node has to be taken. For level 6 group, again, the subglottic extension, post cricoid region, uh, the level 6 group has to be involved. And retropharyngeal group is, uh, is to be taken into account for contouring the CTP in both cases. Now, some typical thing is for the nasopharynx, where the chances of nodal involvement is significantly higher as compared to other subsites, even with very small digits. And the other important factors is that retropharyngeal group are almost invariably in, involved in all the nasopharynx tumors. And level 5 group of lymph nodes has significantly high chance of involvement. So while contouring the level 5 group of lymph nodes in case of nasopharynx, the entire host triangle uh, to be taken into account as shown in this diagram. Uh, the 1B group of lymph nodes are usually not involved. So, unless there is a N plus disease, we should not take into account the 1B group of lymph nodes or it can be taken in the low risk CTB. In case of N plus disease, it can be taken in the low risk CTB. Uh, if the uh, involved lymph node is at level 3, 4 or in retropharyngeal group. But if the involved lymph node is at the level of level 2, then one uh, adjacent lymph node, that is the 1B has to be taken in the high risk CTB. So coming to the conclusion and the kind of a summary, uh, some th rule of thumbs while contouring the nodal CTB. Uh, one need to always treat the contralateral neck if ipsilateral neck is N plus for all the tumors, except in case of buccal mucosa and RMT tumors, where contralateral lymph node is only to be contoured when there is multiple ipsilateral lymph nodes and they have uh, ENE. One of the recent papers says that when the extent of ENE is less than 2 mm versus more than 2 mm, when the extent of ENE is more than 2 mm, the chances of contralateral lymph node involvement uh, is significantly high, even with buccal mucosa and RMT lesion, even if they are well lateralized. So this is the specific subside where uh, while taking the contralateral lymph node, we have to be, uh, we have to take into account the in the T stage of the disease as well as number of lymph nodes being involved previously. If ipsilateral neck, uh, there is N plus disease and the primary is oropharyngeal, then we have to treat the high level 2 disease. In all other, the retrostellar group of lymph node can be omitted. We have to treat 1B and level 5 uh, group of lymph nodes uh, if level 2, 3 or 4 is involved with any subsite. We need to treat the level 6 group of lymph nodes if level 4 is involved. That is the uh, bulk of uh, if, if the, the, the bulk of the disease is below the uh, glottis level and uh, the or if the primary is going to the subglottis region. We need to treat the retropharyngeal in all hypopharyngeal and if oropharyngeal primary, primary tumor results in involvement of level 2, 3 or 4. So a oropharyngeal primary with involvement of level 2, 3, 4, retropharyngeal is to be taken. In hypopharyngeal, uh, the, in case of N0, uh, treating retropharyngeal 
may not be necessary but some of the surgical series from the older series have shown that the chances of involvement of retropharyngeal in that is even around the 5% so it is better to take the retropharyngeal group in the modern IMRT era we can do that by using the uh, differential dosing being delivered and low risk CTV we can contour and deliver a dose of around 50 to 54 gray in in 1.8 or 1.7 gray per fraction Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sambit, for a very nice presentation and a crisp presentation. So there's a lot of uh, many questions might have been answered and students might have learned a lot. So if any are questions from the students, they should put in the chat box or in the question answer session. We have till now two questions. So Dr. Sambit, I'm taking up the first question for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi is asking that if there are multiple subcentimetric lymph nodes who summed long and short axis diameters of more than 17 millimeter should yes. we contour all the subcentimetric lymph nodes separately in the gross tumor volume no ma'am uh, based on the paper that i have quoted it is uh, published in the red journal they have said that it is not required to uh, to contour each of the node individually and take a one centimeter margin around them but the whole lymph node station has to be taken into account and uh, since the lymph nodes are less than centimeter, that is sub-centimetric, the chances of external extension is less than almost 20%. So it, we need not take into account the, the muscles uh, while contouring the CTV. But the whole uh, lymph node station uh, with the uh, cavity part has to be taken into consideration. Okay, but if they are sub centimetric then they should not be contoured separately as a GTV. No, no. They need not be required to be contoured in GTV. Only the lymph node station is to be taken as a involved lymph node station. Okay. So, hope Dr. Lakshmi, your question has been answered. Now, next question is from Dr. Rachet. He is asking that for the buccal mucosa and the oral tongue post-operative cases, if we get a depth of invasion of more than 4 millimeter, uh, should we irradiate the contralateral lymph nodes? Uh, Ma'am, the uh, current evidence is not in favor of that. The current evidence, uh, um, one of the uh, latest trial, that is the arrest trial is going on whether to irradiate these patients or not, based on just based on depth of invasion. So usually in our center, we take 5 mm for the buccal mucosa tumors as the um, uh, cut-up. In most other centers, people take 4 mm, but that is for uh, irradiating the ipsilateral lymph node or and irradiating the primary. As far as the contralateral lymph node involvement, the chances of uh, even uh, with RMT or the buccal mucosa lesion, just with DOI of more than 4 mm, it's not the indication to take the contralateral lymph node involvement. We take into account the, the contralateral lymph nodes only when there is a T4B disease in the beginning. The disease is more medial, that is uh, extending to the pterygoid plates, the uh, medial pterygoid, or uh, ITF is involved, or we have got multiple ipsilateral lymph nodes, which is extra capsular extension. Then only we take the contralateral side and that two level 1B and 2 at max. Beyond that, we don't take into account. And even the evidence are more in favor of these things. Okay. So it means that if the DOI is more than 4 millimeter, that becomes an indication for irradiating the neck if it has not been addressed in the surgery. Or yes, the primary, that too is uh, nodal in the epsilateral. The contralateral nodal indications are separately and it is not related to DI for uh, a limit of 4 millimeter. Yes, okay. ma specifically for buccal mucosa and uh, uh, the RMT regions. That's RMT why region. when, uh, uh, when there is the tongue lesion, the case is totally different because when the DOI of 5 mm is reached in a tongue, the chances of nodal involvement is significantly high. And uh, it has been seen in the surgical series to be around 15 to 20%. So we have to take into account the contralateral lymph nodes in that case, but not in buccal mucosa tumors. Okay. So we have uh, one more question. Now the questions are pouring in. There is a question that uh, the anonymous attendee, in node positive uh, disease for the oropharyngeal cancer, even if the level 2 is not bulky, should we still contour the retrostyloid nodal station? Uh, ideally, it is not recommended. Current evidence is in the uh, um, current evidence is in favor of uh, contouring the retrostyloid group of lymph nodes only if the level two is bulky and or if the uh, 
disease is extending up to the nasopharyngeal region like we have got a tonsillar lesion and it is extending into the nasopharyngeal region then retropharyngeal and retrostyloid group of lymph nodes has to be taken into account even if the neck node at level 2 is subcentimetric otherwise it is not recommended the only if level 2 is grossly involved more than 1 cm in size then we have to take into account the retrostyloid group of lymph nodes okay so if it is not a bulky node just the presence of node in the level 2 should mm. not be an indication but it should be a bulky one and then there are certain other indications which have been mentioned by dr sambit then the retrostyloid nodal station has to be included yes. okay so one more we have one more question that is from dr manisha dr manisha is asking that in case of glottic cancer t2 if the disease is extended to the supraglottic area then how what is the management strategy for the neck nodes uh usually if the t2 and uh, t2 tumor is first of all we have to be absolutely sure that this is t2 and for that uh, there has to be a real scopy and the cord mobility has to be involved the paraglottic and the uh, paraglottic space has to be make sure that we, that is involved because in indian scenario it is very difficult to get t2 lesions and uh, if only the t2 lesion t2 n0 is present then it is an indication for the small field rt but uh, uh, we have to be absolutely sure because a lot of the surgical series which are coming from india where in, even in t2 lesions they have attempted the uh, uh, surgical approaches the microlaryngeal surgery or the tobas approaches uh, that have resulted in significant increase in the nodal failure rates so and a point of caution uh, we have to make sure that uh, the, it is t2 itself and it is n0 itself and for n0 also we need to have an uh, high hr usc to make sure that the nodal involvement is not present in the beginning ideal approach is uh, for even in t2 n0 in indian scenario where there is multiple etiologies and uh, um it is better to take the level 2 3 4 bilaterally uh, rather than leave them behind for t1 n0 definitely the small field rt with uh, and uh, the yamazaki uh, that is hypofractionated rt can be uh, uh, used okay so we uh, dr manisha most probably your answer question has been answered that we have to be very cautious we are while seeing whether we are actually de dealing with t2 or it is something more than t2 lesion and then accordingly the nodal coverage has to be taken that will be the bilateral 2 3 and 4 otherwise if it is small lesion then it is a small field rt only yes okay uh, so dr sambit i think uh, any other question from any of the attendees because you have got the opportunity and when you go into your clinical practice then we uh, boggle our mind or oh, what to do what not to do so we have dr sambit any other questions from anybody else can put it now so ma'am i think there are no other questions from the attendees as of now yeah dr ashutosh is here dr ashutosh do you want to say something or comment uh no ma'am um, yeah. this is an important point actually dr sambit had uh, put in for the question to dr manisha is in the early stage laryngeal cancers we have to be very sure that these are early stage frequently we get cases where the disease is abutting one of the hidden areas like the anterior commissure or near the ventricle and we simply treat if we simply treat these patients by a slow uh, by a small 6 by 6 or 7 by 7 field as given in our books so these patients inevitably come up uh, come back with around 6 7 months later with a neck node so it is important for us to over image if possible so i would preferably do an mr and an um, endoscopic examination a laryngoscopic examination to visualize the anterior commissures the ventricle and the paraglottic spaces before labeling a person as t1 or t2 very true dr city do you want to comment anything uh, no ma'am as rightly had been said by dr ashutosh mukherji also and uh, yeah i also concur with the same uh, uh, basically that we have to be very cautious when we are dealing with early stage cancers to be doubly sure that yes they are those then only we take up a decision uh, so thank you so much dr sambit 
uh, for you. such a nice for presentation. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sweety, for thank moderation. You, and thank you, every participant here. And thank you, Dr. Ashutosh, Dr. Rashi, for uh, course coordination. Thank you, each and everyone. And our next class will be on Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, RPG Life Senses. Thank you.